Welcome back to Rolling Solo, my name is Adam Smith, and inside this game overview and gameplay video, I am excited to be showing you harmonies. Inside the video, I'm gonna take you through the overview of the game. We'll flip this box over, find out more about it. We'll also check out all the components once the game is set up for solo play, and we will be going through a full solo play so you can see this game in action to help you make an informed decision on it as it releases on April 17th. So as of the release of this video, it has already launched out into the wild or it is just on the cusp of doing so. So without further ado, let's find out more about what Harmonies is and see it in action. In a game of Harmonies, you're going to build landscapes by placing colored tokens and creating habitats for your animals. To earn the most points and win the game, you have to incorporate the habitats in your landscape wisely and strategically and have as many animals as you can settle there. The purpose of Harmonies is to create a miniature world in which animals live in perfect harmony with nature. You're going to start by placing your tokens to create landscapes on your board, then choose animals that best fit into your world, and then combine landscapes and animals to score as many points as possible. Harmonies comes in a small box, so it's very portable, easy to move around, and also quick to set up and play. It's worth mentioning, do not be deceived by the small box nature of this one or the fact it uses animals for its theme. This one has a lot of strategy, and once you get into it, you really get hooked. Harmonies is all set up for solo play. As you can see, it takes up a very small footprint of the table itself. And it's also worth mentioning two items here are not part of the box. The first one is the game tray I'm using here for the cubes. And in the top right, you'll see a pencil that also does not come inside the box, but you'll need something to write with as your tracking score at the end of the game. Let's go over the game components, give an idea as to what everything is. So first off, you have a pouch here, large enough that your hand can easily get inside of it, along with a ton of tokens. You have 23 blue, 23 gray, 21 brown, 19 green, 19 yellow, and 15 red tokens. These all represent different landscape types that can be placed on your dashboard. And you'll see how this works later on. I'll also show you each of them right now. These are the six different colored tokens. Five of them have icons on them and represent the major landscape types, which are tied to scoring. When you're actually going against the reference card here, you'll see a row for each of them. So you have grass, buildings, mountains, fields, and water. This one here is gonna be used to supplement them and also sometimes separate things as well. So for instance, this brown one could be used to separate fields from each other for scoring purposes, or it could be used as a base for trees as they begin to climb climb up in size, or it could also be used as a base for buildings. We'll wrap back around and talk more about this scoring card here in the future, but for right now, let's move on to the central board, which is right here. When you're playing solo, this is the side you'll use. If you flip this over to the opposite side, you'll see instead of just three pools for solo, you're gonna have five, and where the arrow is pointing does matter. That will point to the first player. Of course, when you're playing solo, it won't matter. You're gonna go ahead and flip this over and just make sure it's pointing towards yourself, and you're good to go. This is where you're gonna have tokens coming from this bag, and again, they'll be random, and you won't know which ones are coming, as you draw them out and placing three of them in each of the pool areas here. Next, we have a row of cards. These three face-up cards are known as animal cards, and when you're playing solo, you'll have three of them. In a multiplayer game, you'll have five of them face-up. Both of them will be drawn randomly from the top of the animal's deck. That deck right now is sitting off to the right, and you'll see it in a moment. There's more to talk about about these cards. Key things to keep in mind is the banner along the right-hand side, the color of that banner going along. Also, the spots for the different cubes and the values are important. We'll talk again about those later on, but even more important than all of that is how you make these creatures feel at home in your habitat by actually following the criteria at the bottom of the card to build that specific habitat for a cube to be placed to represent that animal finding a home. The rest of the animals deck is face down off to the right. We have a pencil to use for end game scoring and there's a pad there to keep track of scoring. And then below that, the game tray that's not included in the box, but these cubes certainly are. There's a bunch of them that are orange, which will be used for the regular animals. There's an alternative and more advanced mode of play, which will use the white cubes. And there's a lot less of those. Later on in the video, we'll touch more on the advanced mode and how it works. Last but not least, to get going with the solo play, you need a personal board, and this board is double-sided, so you can choose to use this side here or this side of the board if you wish. And there are differences in terms of how gameplay actually works on them. First off, structurally, they're different, as you can tell. The next thing that's major about this one, being that it is an island structure, is you can actually use the water ones, the tokens that you have for water, to actually break off sections of the land, and you want to create islands with this side of the board. So you're going to actually leave spaces kind of secluded off on their own on purpose as part of using this side of the board. 
For your very first play, however, it's recommended to use this side of the board, and when you choose whichever side you want, you'll be flipping the scorecard accordingly. It will match in its color as well. If we flip this over to the opposite side, you'll see it matches the water side of the other side of this personal board. That's going to do it for the overview of the components. It is worth mentioning there is one more which I didn't mention, and that is the Nature's Spirit cards. This is something you can add into the game to spice it up, adding something else into the fray that you'll have to try to accomplish as you're building out your landscapes and trying to find habitats for these animals. It will give you additional criteria to try to score points against. We'll talk more about this specifically towards the end of the video. We now move on to win and loss conditions, and when you're playing in the solo mode, you'll find it on page 11 of the rulebook. It'll specify not only what you're trying to accomplish to win the game, but also some setup tweaks, which we've already covered, which were to flip the central board to the solo side, and also to ensure there are only three animal cards face up, not five, like when you're playing multiplayer. So setup is very easy in terms of the differences between multiplayer and solo. Going into the game turn, you'll see at the end of your turn, there will be a couple things to tweak. We'll touch on these when we go through our very first full game turn and then it says right here when playing solo mode your goal is to earn as many suns as possible representing your level of success during the game the number of suns obtained depends primarily on your score but it's also influenced by the side of the personal board used which you can see right here depending on which side you use as well as nature's spirit and the one you select at the start if you're using it so if you are using it then you'll have this to add into the fray as well so how does a game of harmonies end? Well, the game ends in one of two ways. The pouch on the left there is either empty when you need to refill the central board there on the top left, or at the end of your turn, there are two or less unoccupied spaces on your personal board. As soon as one of those two endgame triggers happen, you'll head to the pad and you'll tally up your score and convert to sun icons to see how you did. Just before we head into gameplay, let's talk about the reference card, which breaks down how many points you get depending on how you set up your landscapes. It's actually quite easy to decipher. You'll see in the very top, you'll see a row that is going to correspond to the trees row. So basically, if you have this token right here in a space, it's going to provide you zero points, as you can see here. And building it up is not going to do anything either. But the second you build it up and you go ahead and place one of these trees on top, you have actually created a tree. And at this point, that would actually be worth seven. It's worth noting you cannot do something like this, create a tree that is worth three, and then decide you want to place something like this on top and be able to rearrange this to get a higher tree. So the timing of placing tokens as well as the order in placing the tokens really do matter. Not only because you can have additional criteria from multiple different animals that you might have placed next to your sideboard that have almost similar criteria, but you have to make really tough decisions sometimes as to how to start building out your landscape to accommodate one of them, which actually might cut off another one. That's going to do it for the trees. They're pretty straightforward. You can follow the visuals right here to determine exactly how many points you get for each tree height. And then we move on to mountains. You're going to see links here for all the ones that actually have point values. That's because as the mountain gets higher in terms of its height, it is going to provide more points. But it's not going to provide any points if that mountain is all by itself. If this mountain of three is sitting out here like this and there's no other mountains around it, it's not considered linked. So it actually generates no points whatsoever. But the second you actually build a mountain beside it like this, now you actually have a link, and that means each of these would generate one point for you, which would be this one right here. And then you can start building those mountains up higher, which of course will start giving you now three points for that one and one point for this one. So you're going to want to keep your mountains clumped together to ensure they're linked so they actually count for points on your landscape as you go along. Moving to the next row of the reference card, we have fields. This is the next type of landscape, and I've got one placed right now. That one will generate me no points. Very similar to a mountain. If they're all by themselves, they don't do anything for you. But the second you go ahead and place a field adjacent to it, now you have two. Once you have that grouping of two, you now generate five points, as it shows here. You'll also see it's linked, but there's a plus there. That basically means no matter how many more fields you place beside it and how big that field grows in total, it's not going to increase in points any more than just just five. So the strategy behind fields is to build many of them, but keep them separated because that will generate you the most amount of points versus clumping them together into one giant field that only nets you five points. Now, buildings are very interesting. They are the red tokens, and they are going to generate five points for each building, but only if surrounded by at least three tokens of different colors out of the six available, including red. And you only consider the top token on each adjacent space, nothing that might be resting underneath the top token. 
Now here's a look at the three different variations of buildings you can create, and you can tell this by taking a look at the iconography on this reference card. You'll see the bottom token is split into three different colors. The brown token, the mountain token, or a building token can all be used as a base and then the building token goes on top of either of those three. So these are the three different looks of buildings, but they all fall into this category here. But the most important criteria beyond getting these created is the fact that you need to have three different color tokens out of the six available, including red, surrounding the building that you've created for it to be valid. And then at that point, it's worth five points. As an example of scoring buildings, the middle one here has three different colors surrounding it, so this building would be legitimate and count for five points, whereas these buildings on the outskirts here having only one currently, and just based on the placement of them being very poor, if another one was placed here, these will never count for anything in regards to building points, so placing them here wouldn't really be all that wise. The rules also specify that red surrounding the building also count as a different color. It's any of the six colors, as long as there's three of them. So you can see here, this building would still count for five points as three different colors surround it. The final landscape on the reference card is water. And for this one, everything has to be linked. If you only have one by itself, it's gonna count for zero points. Anything you connect beyond that is gonna to start to bump the points up exponentially. It's gonna really start rolling forward. It's worth mentioning though, when you're actually tracking points, because of course these could trail off into multiple paths, you're going to be going by the shortest path, ends included. Now here's an example for scoring where we have a number of water tokens connected. Taking the shortest path on this one, regardless of which end you start from, to count that path, you'll notice that this is not going to be part of it because from here, going to one end to another is going to have it cut this one out. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And if you take a look across here, count out six, you get 15 points. If you actually had even more than that, let's say you went to the seventh position, you can actually have them go further than this. And for every additional one, you gain plus four points. So scoring will not only include what we just went over here from the landscapes in terms of how we build them, but also how we go ahead to build habitats for animals to actually live in these locations. So let's go ahead and start our solo play. The very first thing we'll do is take this bag. We're going to shuffle it up and we're going to place three random tokens without looking on each of these three spaces. So now let's dive into our very first solo turn and inside of a turn there are two optional things you can do and there's one mandatory thing you have to do every turn. The mandatory thing is to take and place tokens from the central board. So basically select one of these three circles, take all of the corresponding tokens out of it and then those tokens need to be placed on your personal board. Now you don't have to do this as your very first action during your turn. You can actually choose to take a couple optional actions if you wish and those are you can choose to take an animal card from up here in the market area but you can only ever take one animal card on your turn and again it's optional because you may not want to or you may be completely full of animals already that you're going after and can't take any more so every single time you take an animal card you'll place it above your personal board until you have four across the top so being able to take one animal on your turn is really nice. You're going to want to think strategically as the best time frames to do so and make sure that you're actually building habitats that are working towards the criteria on the animal card you're taking so you can actually get those animals into play and score yourself some points. So once you do take an animal card, let's say hypothetically I took this one right here, you place it down here and you'd immediately populate it with two orange cubes in the upper right hand corner. This represents a number of points that you do not have yet. Once you've actually created this pattern in any orientation on this game board. In other words, it doesn't have to look exactly like this. It could be turned or rotated a different way. Once you have it, you'll place the cube in the bottom most position that is still there onto the spot that's visually identified right at the bottom of the card. And that is representing the animal, which you're seeing illustrated in the middle, actually inhabiting that particular landscape. So it's optional to take an animal, but in this hypothetical turn, I took an animal. The second you do, you place the cubes in the top right hand corner. And if you wish, as another optional thing you can do in your turn, you can place one of the cubes in play. Again, so long as you actually have this habitat constructed. Now, once you do this, it's worth mentioning, let's say we've placed this on a token, which looks exactly like this. In a future turn, I can't then go ahead and take this cube and place it on the exact same token that already has a cube on it. Once a cube is placed on a token, that animal resides there and nothing else can go there. 
Now, a helpful tip for beginners is you'll see a banner running along the right-hand side of every single animal card with an icon that actually lines up with the landscape type that the animal will actually reside in once you create that habitat. So it's a good idea to not necessarily take four cards worth of animals that are residing on the exact same types of landscapes like fields for these two right here because that could become much more difficult to build something that actually works for all that. It's better to kind of diversify across the number of different animals. However, that's just a good rule of thumb off the start. And as you become more experienced with the game, you can certainly start taking animals of the exact same type of landscape and have no issues. So starting off my turn here, I've got three available pools and I'm really just looking at the criteria for these animals to figure out which pool is best to start with. Out of the three, I could go for an easy win with this one here because by taking this pool, I'd be able to place one right away in terms of a cube, but I actually kind of like these two better, I think. I've chosen the tokens from right here and I've gone ahead and placed them on the game board. We got the brown one on the bottom here. We place a tree on top. So this is going to end up netting me three, but I'm working my way towards potentially going after this animal right here and this one right here. So I'm kind of setting myself up to be able to future place some planes in blocks of two, maybe between some of the water tokens. As an optional action, I chose to take an animal this turn, so I place it above my player board, place cubes in all of the slots, and now I can work towards actively trying to build these habitats. Now there are two key aspects of your turn that you want to keep top of mind. One is you always have to take and place tokens from one of the three pools, but you can actually pause between placing a token. So for instance, if I chose this pool of three and I bring them over here and I'm thinking about what to do, you have to place at least one token, but after that you can actually take optional actions in between placing tokens. So you could have the three tokens place one and then choose, well, I want to take an animal card or maybe I want to place an animal cube. You can actually divvy up the placement of those tokens with optional actions if you wish. The second is in relation to the animal cards that are placed above your dashboard. And of course, let's say hypothetically, I had four of them sitting across here and we came into a new turn. And as you know, we can only place one animal cube every single turn. Let's say we had only one left on this one. So we went ahead and placed it into a habitat. The second we do this, this no longer counts towards the four limit. It actually gets taken away at this point and frees up a slot. Keep that in mind. I've reached the end of my very first turn, so all of the tokens I did not choose, which should be six in this case, are going to be removed and placed back in the box. I'm just going to place them off to the side. They do not go back into the pouch. Next, we take a look at the animal row, and at this point, we simply just refill it because there's an empty position. However, let's say hypothetically, I hadn't have taken the optional action to take an animal. Then I'd have three of the exact same animals that I had at the beginning of the turn. Well, in solo play, you're able to discard one of those three animals if you didn't take one on your turn, and that allows you to cycle through animals to get to ones you might be looking for. We've got a new animal in the row with a new requirement for a habitat. And finally, we go ahead and replenish all three spaces on the central board. I've got myself some very interesting options going into this turn. I've chosen to take this group of three right here, and I think I might actually place these out before I do any optional actions. Now, you might be wondering what I'm doing here is I'm trying to make sure that the building that I build right here is going to be surrounded by three once it becomes a building. Right now, it has the ground level covered, but we need to place another building on top of it. And once I do, for sure, that will count for five points. I'm also partially built out this one here, so I probably should grab this one as we're getting close to it. And I'm also keeping an eye on this one now as well, because technically I've got that one going for me, too. Tokens are placed. I also chose to take an animal and I'm not going to be placing any animal cube in play. So that's going to end off my turn. Let's clean up and go to the next turn. The pools have been replenished up here and we also have a brand new animal in here to check out. This one is going to be using mountains as well as water tied together. This is a fish, obviously, and the mountains are actually going to generate quite a bit of points if we can actually build those up as well. So that's very tempting. But looking at the breakdown over here, I'm honestly thinking this one right here is perfect for what I'm trying to do. I'm going to go ahead and place this building right here on top of the other building, which is going to be perfect because I know that's going to net me five points now as I have at least three different colored tokens surrounding it. So that's good. It also helps me work towards potentially picking up another animal, which I could do right now as an optional action to bring it down if I wish. But I'll just wait until the end because I'm focused on these two anyway at the moment. So let's go ahead and place this one right here because that's what I was trying to accomplish with this. We'll be able to get a flamingo out into play, which I think I'll actually go ahead and do right 
right now. Let's take the optional action to take a cube here and we'll place it where it is going to inhabit on the landscape. It's going to land right here. So it's going to be on this one. And again, whenever there is a cube on one of these tokens, no other token can go on top of it. It is locked down and that also includes any additional cubes also cannot go on the same spot. There already is a cube. And then we have this one brown one here. We want to take a look at this and I'm trying to build out the bases. So let's go ahead and place this one here. We are just one green or I should say tree away, tree top from actually being able to place out this individual. And I've also selected a brand new animal from the row here, and I'm already part way towards getting one of these out in the future as well, so it worked out pretty good. That'll wrap up this turn. Let's do some end of turn cleanup and head into the next one. Just like that, we're all set for the next round. And it's worth mentioning, things are going pretty well down here. I mean, I got a building going on. I got a perfect field situation going on with two fields right here. I'm working my way through actually a few different combinations here, all kind of clumped up in the same area. So this is a good start. I'm gonna go ahead with these three right here. It seems like this is a pretty popular spot for me. I've been taking from that location almost every single time, just been working out that way. We're gonna go ahead and I might wait on this one for a little bit later. Let's go ahead and build out this one here. So that is gonna satisfy the three we need in a row to be able to place this creature out. So let's go ahead and do that optionally. We'll place that out there and I can only again do this once per turn, but that's not bad at all. So we're working our way. We just need one more and that card is out of here. So maybe we can focus on doing this over here and actually guess what we can set ourselves up to do that in the next turn so we'll go ahead and place that on the opposite side of it so we can actually pull that off later on this is working out really nicely now this one here i have to think about so right now it could end up being the base for a building but i want to think about where i'm placing things so if i'm trying to get to this in the future i've got one here a building we'll probably place another uh, planes right here which means maybe another building would make sense here and another planes here and that would kind of get rid of two of those cubes in the future so maybe we'll go ahead and start building a second building get the base of it going right there now for a moment there, I was debating actually taking this animal right now, but I think I'll actually not take any of the three up there. I'm gonna wait for the perfect one that lines up even better with what I've got going on here. I think everything else going on up there might be a little bit too much, especially this one here, which will have me having to place a cube on multiple different field locations. And again, remember there's only so many of them. So actually getting rid of that card, I wanna to try to find cards I can successfully, hopefully run through quicker. And these two are not in that category at the beginning of the game. I didn't take an animal card in the last turn, so I've gone ahead and discarded the ladybug one that was sitting in the middle and instead got some koalas. These ones could be interesting to place, potentially. Let's do an optional action right off the start here. I'm gonna go ahead and place one animal cube right here as we have this exact sequence and that is gonna complete this animal card which now comes out of this area, allowing for more to come in in the future. I can still count this for the full amount of points later on. As an optional action, I chose an animal to place down here and we're gonna go after trying to build towards this. There's actually a couple mountain pieces in this position right here and a water which works out pretty nicely. Let's position them. I decided to place the mountains up here. We've got two, we need three to meet the criteria here Then we can place a fish in here in the future and maybe I'll build out a little bit of a lake situation going around it in order to get all these fish off this card. We certainly got a very similar pattern of things coming out this time around. It might actually make a lot of sense to continue pushing really hard for this one and we can actually set ourselves up to maybe finish it. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll both place this on top for three and then we'll go ahead and place these other ones around it. We want to kind of connect them so that they can actually give us additional points later on, the three in a row. But this has now set us up to place cubes across this. And seeing as there's nothing else to place for this one right now or this one, we might as well place an animal cube here and start working our way around. Now going into the end of turn here, I don't think I wanna keep this card any longer in this row. I don't plan to go after it, although I do have two of the three already completed with these two. But the downside is I don't plan on putting a building right here. I plan on putting a field there. So I don't think I'm gonna pivot on that one. I need to get rid of this one and focus on it. Things have been reset for the brand new round. We have a new creature we could potentially bring in if we wish, because we still have an empty slot here. Have to think about that. This was a much tougher call this time around, especially with all those buildings sitting in there. Very, very tempting, but I think this one will work out well for me. I'm gonna go ahead and place this mountain one right here because this will make sure that this mountain here in terms of its height is gonna count 
for its points at the end because it was not linked, but now it is, being that there are two mountains beside each other. And then, of course, another one of these can go right here, which is perfect because that's going to give me the four around it to be able to get rid of all of the cubes. And we might as well go ahead and place one optionally on one right here, as we know we can actually work around this and get this card out of here over time. And then we have this one remaining, which we probably should place right here as we'd originally planned. And that's going to build this connection, which allows us to place one on top. But as I've already placed an animal cube, I have to wait. We've reset for the turn, got some interesting options up here, as well as we turfed one of the creatures that was up here and got a completely different one. One that I don't think is going to jive very well either, but it doesn't have much for requirements. These ones are really good for getting done quite quickly, but we still have a lot of work to do with the ones we already have as well. I think I'll go with these three right here. I think this is a pretty decent choice. We're going to place this mountain on top of the other mountain to start building up how many points that one is worth. And we can also build this one up further once we get all the animals placed into their habitat. Then, of course, we could increase the height of this mountain to get the maximum out of it. We could actually go to... Oh, no, three is the highest. So we are as high as we can possibly go on that one. Never mind. Not going to go any higher than that. But this one could go to three and benefit us points-wise. So working towards that. This would be really beneficial right here because now we've connected a really long chain which is going to open up the ability to get quite a bit more points so now the longest or i should say the shortest path through this is five long which is pretty good that would give us a total of 11 points there i'm not very certain that i'm happy i have this one in the first place because while i don't want to place it on top of this even though that would actually net me three points by creating a tree it would stop me from creating a building which i need to do again to try to move these things out of the way and get them going I've gone ahead and placed another one of my fish into this position here. One more to go, and then this card is dealt with. I think I'll just place this. It's going to be tough because I don't know what I'm building towards at this point. I might just place it in here. I just hope that that doesn't mess me over. Let's go ahead and do it. Now, at the end of every one of my turns, I've been replenishing the central board with new tokens, as well as deciding whether to discard a card from the animal row. It's worth mentioning in terms of the order of operations of that, you replenish this first, and then you can decide when you're playing solo if you want to turf one of the animals in that area to bring something else in. Again, only if you haven't taken an animal down to your primary row next to your board. And it's worth mentioning we're getting closer and closer to end game as there's two ways this game can end as i mentioned earlier when the pouch is completely empty when you go to draw from it that can trigger the end game and also if there's two or less unoccupied spaces on your personal board at the end of your turn that also triggers end of game and we're getting close to that one now, out of all the things i could potentially place like i could place one here right now which would net me five points i could place the last fish here which would net me 16 points that's certainly the best one of all of them and then over here here, we are not set up to take this one yet unless I go after specifically some fields and put them around some water. So let's actually go ahead and take the 16 and get that done so we can resolve this card. We can flip it over, just place it next to our board, and that will open up a spot for us as well. And this is also a very tough call because I want to get those buildings, but you know what? It might be more important to get this one going because we'll get some more points off of it and at higher values than focusing on the five here. So let's go ahead and take, I think we'll take this batch right here because I think what's perfect about this is I can go ahead and place this here, making the mountain region in that area worth even more. Plus take these two and I can now go ahead and place them. Maybe I'll place them off to the side because maybe near the end of the game, I want to connect all the water together here and get the maximum amount of points so i'll place these over here for now and that's going to satisfy the ability to potentially place a token over here in the next turn I chose to change out an animal card, but it's not going to mean much at this point. I'm really trying to avoid running out of space. And as I pulled the rest of the tokens out of the bag, we got one here that is definitely glaring me in the face. And that is going to be the mountains. It's going to net me some serious points. It's probably the best choice that I have out of this pile. So out of what I can potentially complete here, I should probably focus on this one right here. So we're going to go ahead and take this one for 10 and we'll place it right here. And then we're going to go ahead and take all three of these and I'm going to stack them in a ginormous pile and create them the problem with this is is that they're not going to be adjacent to well actually i could actually make that happen so right now based on the end game criteria being at the end of your turn if there are two or less unoccupied spaces on the board if i was to place this all in one pile it means nothing for points at all and there would be two or less unoccupied spaces so it makes more sense to break this up and maybe have two mountains here 
and one mountain down here. And even though this single mountain here will just net me one point and this nets me three, that's still not bad. And that really wraps it up. It's now time to tally up the points and see how I did. I've got a column here for myself. You'll see it's broken down into the different major landscapes. And then there's also a number of spots along the side here to tally up points off the animals, which will be calculated all the way down until it equals your final score. So we'll start right now with the trees. For the trees, I got a total of seven points because each one of these trees are worth three each. And then this one right here is just worth one for seven. For mountains, I did pretty good. I got myself 18 points. We have a seven from this one, seven from this one. Again, they're linked, so they count for their points in full. So that's a total of 14 right there. These ones are linked together, so they're gonna count as well. Another three for this one to 17 and one to make 18. Moving on to the fields, I had two fields which were valid and they're gonna give me five points each. These single ones off the middle of nowhere give me nothing, so a total of 10 points. For buildings, I have one building completed, which gives me five points. This is at least three of the six colors surrounding it easily. And I was trying to build a second building right here, but we didn't make it in time. So just five points on the buildings. And as you remember, I was trying to build myself a nice long water river, but that got interrupted by a pile of rocks, which did generate us some points, but it did cut us short from drawing a much larger pile of water here, but still pretty good. We got five for a total of 11 and anything that's not connected and not following the shortest path doesn't count. So just from the landscape points alone, we have 51 points. Now we need to tally up the animal cards and these are calculated a bit differently. For each animal card, whether completed or not, you score the number of points indicated at the topmost space without an animal cube. A card with all cubes still on it is worth zero points. So there's no penalty. So in other words, if I had to pulled in more animal cards that were sitting in here and they had all of their cubes filled in, I actually do have one just like that. It doesn't actually penalize you in any way. So looking across the animal cards, we get 16 points for this one, 11 points for this one, and over here, 10 points and absolutely nothing for this one. So after totaling the landscapes as well as the animal cards, my total comes to 88. So an 88 doesn't get us quite to 90, so we'd be at the 70 mark from my understanding, which would be two suns. And then the A side of the board, we get an additional sun there, so that's three. And we didn't use nature's spirit, so just three suns. But going into this, the next time I play it, I'd be trying to best that score and continue up the track. So that's going to do it for the solo playthrough. Had a lot of fun with this one. Also want to mention a couple different variations and changes you can make to gameplay to enhance it beyond this core experience. You can flip this board over to the opposite side. It'll have a completely different structure and also it'll ensure the landscapes of water to be used in a completely different way. All the same game rules would apply the same using this side of the board, except a different way to actually use the water landscape because now, of course, this area is completely surrounded by water. So every single time you chunk off a part of this area and create an island, you gain five points. So for instance, if we actually went like this, this would actually break this off and make it an island. Or if we went like this, this would also break things off and turn it into multiple islands. So in this case, you have three islands and you'd also get the chain connection of all these water landscape tokens in terms of points as well. It's also worth noting when you use this side of the game board, even if you don't decide to break things up and create additional islands like segregating land off by itself, you're still going to have one island at the end that's still worth five points. If you break things up, however, like I just showed you, that would be five points per the three islands. So that'd be 15 points. Let's talk about another way to spice up the experience with harmonies. You can use the nature spirit cards. You simply draw two, look at them, and at the very beginning of your first turn, you select one and place it face up above your personal board. It will take up one of the slots, one of the four slots available. Here's an example of four of the nature spirit cards. And these again can be completed in the same way as an animal card. And once completed, they can be taken out of your maximum four cards above your dashboard. At the end of the game, the nature spirit cards are treated just like animal cards. You score points if you place the nature spirit cube on your personal board and you are not penalized if you don't. However, the points scored by the nature spirit card are not tallied until the end of the game and are based on the landscapes you've created. Now taking a look at the far left nature spirit card there, you're gonna see one that gives you points based on groups of connected landscapes. So for example, this one on the far left, you score two points for each group of one or two yellow tokens and 10 points for each group of three or more yellow tokens on your personal board, in addition to the normal points scored for fields. 
Another type of nature spirit can be one that is all about maximizing the height of particular stacks of landscape tokens. And that, my friends, wraps up the game overview and gameplay video for Harmonies coming to retail April 17th. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of this one, if you're intrigued by it, and if you're thinking of picking it up, would love to hear your thoughts. And as always, keep on rolling solo.